Hello and welcome to my tutorial series on how to model low poly vegetables in Blender. This is part 8 and today we are going to model some potatoes. This is the finished object and as always I designed this so we can follow along very easily. To know what we have to do, let's add a background image as our reference by pressing Shift A Go to Image and Background. Now let's add a cube as our basic mesh to the scene and scale it up in the Y axis by pressing S for scale, then Y for scaling in Y. Repeat this step and make some different cubes. Now let's shade them smooth by right clicking on the object and then choose Shade Smooth. And this was it for the modeling part. Let's add a modifier, to be exact, a subdivision surface modifier, and give it some subdivisions by pressing the right arrow on the view and the render up to two or three. When you select multiple objects and press Command and L, you can link the modifiers by choosing Modifiers. Now we can add a Displace modifier to the object. Press Plus New for a new texture. Let's scale it down a bit. And now as our texture, we can choose the distorted noise. Get the amount down to zero and the size up a bit. And as you can see, our object is now displaced. Let's add the modifier to the other objects as well. And if you think your objects are too uniform, you can always play with the vertices a bit and change the form. For now, every object has the same displacement. And to change that, we can go to the Modifiers tab. We add an empty and as our texture coordinate we choose object and then choose this empty we just created. Add it to the rest of the objects. And as you can see when we move the object it will update automatically. I want a bit more of displacement, so I will pump up the subdivision surface modifier. The more vertices you have, the more displacement will be displayed. In the shading tab now, let's create a new material by clicking plus new. And this is where the shading fun begins. To start off, let's add a noise texture by pressing Shift A and then in the search bar you can just write noise and select it. Let's change the size and the detail. Now to have a bit more control over the colors. Let's get a color ramp and combine it with the noise texture. And we are using this as some kind of map for the colors we want to display later. So we have to add a mix RGB shader and plug this into the base color. 
and we use the color ramp as our factor. By choosing two different colors now, everything that once was black is now the first color, and everything that was white is the second color now. Now by manipulating the color ramp, we can choose the way we want our colors displayed on our object. All right, this looks fine for now. Now let's add another mix RGB. We're using this to control the roughness of our object because I want all the light color to be a bit more shiny or less rough, say it in Blender vocabulary. And the black parts I want to be a bit more rough so we can use this color ramp again. Let's add an inverge node. To get exactly that look. Now the bright color is very shiny and the dark one is more on the rough side. Let's add another color ramp to control the way it is displayed. Later, we're giving this roughness input another texture to work with, so I set the mix method to add. All right. You can always play with the inputs a little more, but for a basic potato, I think this looks uh, really nice. So now for some extra detail, I want an additional layer of dirt on top of the potato's surface. So let's grab a bump node by pressing Shift A, then go to Vector, then Bump, or just type it in the search bar. Connect it to the normal of your material shader. And now we're adding another text another noise texture here. And this texture will, will work as 
as a map again. So everywhere that is black, there will be the dirt surface layer. Get our good friend the color ramp. And from black to white, I want it to be real sharp. So I get these two handles right side by side. So we need another noise texture to control the amount of bump on or dirt surface layer. So we also need another mix RGB node to plug it into the height of the bump node. Now we take this color ramp and plug it into the color input. And as you can see, we have indentations now. And because we want bumps and not indentation, we can just add an invert node in between the color ramp and the mix RGB shader node. Now we can duplicate this mix RGB node by pressing Shift and D. And this one will connect to the second color of our mix node. Add another noise texture or the texture of our dirt layer and plug this into the color input of the mix node. Now I'm choosing a real high number here. Let's give it some detail. And now we can use the color ramp with the invert node as a factor to display this bumps here. And now all the black places will display our dirt texture. And because everywhere where will be dirt we don't want that to be shiny. So we have to connect our setup to the mix RGB node that we connected to the roughness. Now to give our dirt another color, let's get another mix RGB node. Now let's take our input that we created and connect it to the factor. Now everywhere where it was white there will be the, the mixed color for the potatoes that we created first and all the black parts will display the dirt now. And by changing the color to a dark brown, we now have the detail that we were going for. 
and there is your potato. And I really want to see how you do this. So send me your work on Twitter or Instagram and I will display some of your works in future videos. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification button to keep yourself updated on new videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching and have fun creating!